Oh, I got a tweet from a fellow YouTuber. What's this then? Blah, 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 blah. Something about a new video. Not going to read that because it's not about me. Says Crusader, when I'm done with this one, you may want to take a look at them. Lots of woo-woo for you, you. Uh, you can't tell me what to do. Oh, wait. Are you trying to use reverse psychology on me so I don't check out this channel so you can keep it all to yourself? Ha <laughs> ha! I'm on to you, you sneaky beaky doodad. I will check this guy out and I'm going to leave a link to your video too. Take that. My vindictiveness knows no bounds. Teach you to mess with me. Ha! <laughs> Welcome to Slightly Better Channel. Slightly better than what? Slightly better than having the tips of your toes snipped off and forced into your ears, nose and eye holes. Actually, what's the betting that it's slightly worse than that? People with a spiritual gift are affected by these 10 strange things. Oh my, a list. We haven't had a list in ages. And I got to crack out the old woo recombobulation translatomatron and see what this guy is really saying. Right, ahem. <clears throat> 10 reasons why Sirsik is a big smelly moron. Damn it, woo recombobulation translator Matron. What have I told you about telling people the truth? Everyone is gifted and unique in their own different way. I'm not. Everyone has something they do effortlessly that might look like an arduous task for others. Uh, arduous? You mean arduous, right? I mean, a perfecter example you could not have come up with right there, but now all I've got to do is figure out whether you did it on purpose or you just... I don't even know, but wow! Some gifts are not difficult to spot, while some take concentration and some level of focus to activate. Some people with spiritual gifts might not even know they have it because of the complexity in discovering it. Or, you know, it doesn't real, because superpowers are not being and exist, maybe. Speaking of spiritual gifts, they are rarely found, and for this reason, those who have them seem to be very special and extraordinary. Okay, I don't want to worry anyone, but my eyes just rolled so far into the back of my head that I can no longer see anything in front of me. Although I can see inside my head now. It's very spacious in there. Although I feel like something is missing. Oh wait, there it is. Is it meant to be that small? In this 21st century, technology and science are making it look like the concept of spiritual gifts are fading away. <laughs> I wonder why that is. It's almost as if when we can record everything and share those recording around the world instantly, it takes more than just saying, yeah, dude, I totally levitated last night. It was gnarly for someone to believe that you actually did. And we're not just really, really high. But, you know, not high in the air, high from injecting one pot. Many people in this disposition don't believe in spiritual gifts, all thanks to scientific and technological inventions which make it look like everything is drawn from scientific principles. You trolling, bruh? No? Do, do you not wonder why that is? And I'm gonna receive crap from the But sick, you don't know, brigade. But if you can't prove it, I'm under no obligation to believe it. In fact, I don't think anyone should believe anything for which there is no proof, and as far as I'm concerned, spiritual powers of any kind are either complete fabrications or some other phenomenon dressed up in spiritual clothing when they have other, far more rational explanations that don't involve being Superman. When we talk about spiritual gifts, people's minds tend to go to the third world countries. Uh, what? I mean, my mind tends to go to, God damn it. How did this hippie get so close to me, and why does he seem to think he's allowed to use up my oxygen spouting nonsense? People who believe in spiritual gifts believe individuals who possess it are from third world countries. Well, if true, although I kind of doubt it, then I can only imagine they think that because people in countries with lower overall education level are more likely going to more readily believe the claims of various mystics and magic men. However, just because a country has a better education system won't stop people from believing the ludicrous claims of the charlatans and the just plain deluded wherever they come from, which is sad. I mean... I can't blame people who were born into poverty when they get taken advantage of like that. But if you have all the benefits of living in a developed nation, well, I'ma call you as a sees you when you says the dumb. 
People with spiritual gifts, though they feel special, sometimes these gifts can turn out to be like burdens to them when they don't know how to manage gifts. I have some great news for them. They ain't special. Nothing to worry about. Now you can get back to your dreary, unimportant lives. Doesn't that make you feel all warm and fuzzy? If you're someone who's open to the concept of spiritual gifts and spiritual awakening, psh, this video might interest you. See, it's kind of the opposite for me. The fact that I think all of this stuff is just complete gibbering hoo-ha is exactly why I'm interested in this video and videos like it. Also to those of you who always show up with tedious inevitability to give me a mouthful about if I don't like it, I shouldn't watch it, or why can't you just let people have their fun? Well, take that argument. Imagine a friend is saying it to you. I know, you don't have any friends. That's why I said imagine. And apply it to yourself. Also, the fact of the matter is, any nonsense presented as fact dilutes the understanding of reality among the general populace and thus needs idiots like me to point out its flaws and laugh at it. I'm a goddamn hero. We're going to consider some of the strange things that usually affect people with a spiritual gift. Something, 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 tasteless mental illness joke. But before moving on to this list, if you enjoy watching this video, please help to like and share this video, guys. Yeah, do that. But not that video. This one. Because this one's, you know, good. Well, less terrible. Here are some strange things that affect spiritually gifted people. Ah, what are we, like, over half a standard six script in? And he's only just gotten to the list. Oh boy, I'm excited. 1. They are an empath. This is a common attribute of people with spiritual gifts. The ability to sense and experience the feelings of people around them even without being told. Uh, of course, empaths. Someone who can mysteriously tell how someone is feeling or what they might be thinking by using magic. The magic of reading body language, like most people can do, seeing as a big part of communication is nonverbal. Although probably not as big as the famous old 93% thing, but still. How you say something, especially face to face, is often just as important as what you say. For example, I'm going to say the same sentence twice. See if you can detect dishonesty in one of these reads. These ideas are really good, and you are very smart. These ideas are really good, and you are very smart. Now, if you said in the second one, I wasn't being entirely candid, well done. You are now an empath. Get your leggings and cape at the door. People with spiritual gifts are always willing to help someone to get out of bad emotions or moods. Their ability doesn't just end up in sensing the problem. Fun fact, unless you are an empath, you literally have zero empathy and no ability whatsoever to help people when they are struggling with bad times. You horrible piece of shit. They even become restless when the problem is still there. Sometimes they even go out of their way to ensure that they help the person in a bad mood until they brighten up or feel better. It's just so hilarious that you have made a normal human compunction, especially among people you care about, into something, well, Woo! Special. Hence, woo. <sighs> anyway, next. 2. They strongly sense negative energy in the environment. People with spiritual gifts can detect negative energy in the room. They're just like radars that point out when something is not too okay in a given environment. We've covered this type of thing before. If something is there and a person can detect it, then a machine should be able to as well. Hell, modern machines are getting to the point where even, and this is related to your first point, and I use the word point very loosely, but a modern AI can detect emotions from photographs to pretty high accuracy. Would you call them empaths? And if they can do something as seemingly nebulous as that, we should be able to detect the things are wrong waves or whatever type of BS is in a room. Even without having a conversation or even having any sign of frown by anybody in the room, they can still detect it when all is not just right. Wait, this is just point one again, isn't it? Yeah, body language isn't just in someone's face. No duh. And if you walk into a room and everyone is quiet, you're gonna feel like something's up. Because usually people will greet you with open body language and such. This isn't deep and meaningful, it's just normal. 
you are normal. Deal with it. Okay, you're probably not that normal, but you know what I mean. 3. You wake up during spiritual and sacred hours. Translation. You have a terrible random sleeping pattern because you spend all your time thinking about how amazing you are and why won't anybody see it and feed you all the attention. Spiritually gifted individuals are usually having trouble sleeping within some hours that are considered to be spiritual. This is one of those common threads I see with lovers of all things woo, attributing negative things as positive qualities or good things to happen to them. And so it makes a great excuse to not try and improve those aspects of yourself or seek help that you need, such as individuals who believe they have special powers to hear ghosts or something like that. Turns out though, they were having auditory hallucinations, which can be an indicator of somewhat mild things like sleep issues, stress or side effects of medication to really big deals like Alzheimer's, brain tumours or mental illness such as schizophrenia or PTSD. But if you are attributing these things to having some kind of special powers, you aren't going to give it the serious credence and seek the help that you may need because some dipwit like this told you that you're magic. Most of these spiritual activities occur between 3 and 4 a.m. It is not just a bathroom break. Okay, to be fair, I get pretty spiritual when I'm up at 3 in the morning. God damn it! Why can't I sleep? Waking up within these hours of the day regularly means that there might be spirits that need to communicate with someone who can operate within their realm of frequency. Okay, quick question. Who's 3 to 4 a.m.? Because depending on which time zone you're in, that means a completely different time of day. Not even to mention things like daylight savings and all that. And let's just say for a minute that this is true. Well, I'll be quite frank, these ghosties can do one. I barely get enough sleep as it is without Mildred, the 1960s go-go dancer, coming around to share her mildly racist opinions. I need to sleep, and you need to stop being such a judgmental tosser, Mildred. And you are just within that realm. For this reason, you find it difficult sleeping within these hours of the day. No, seriously, either get a better sleeping pattern or maybe go see the doctor, because that's yet another thing that could be a sign of something serious. 4. Their emotions often affect their spiritual environment. If you are spiritually gifted, you are always caught up in situations that require you to control your emotions due to its intensity. Let me guess. What you probably mean is, you're kind of a butthole. But you use your specialness to excuse it, and everyone needs to take extra special care around you, or your intense emotions will overwhelm you and you turn into a nasty piece of work, leading everyone to have to walk on eggshells around you, lest you explode at them about how they don't care about you or your gifts. Yeah, we've all met that person, and boy golly are they such fun to be around. And I'm not talking about someone who has issues that they are actually trying to address. I mean someone who refuses to do anything about it, and everyone else is at fault for every single negative feeling they have. Reminds me of the idea, if you meet a donk every once in a while, you just met a donk. But if everyone you meet is a donk, well the common factor in those interactions is you. If you realise you know such a person, if you can, maybe avoid them, it'll make you much happier. If you are this person, stop it! If not controlled, things around can get faulty when your emotions go wrong. Why is everyone being so mean to me? All I said was they are the worst people on the planet and I hope they die. Why do they have to overreact like that? <laughs> Sometimes, a strange phenomenon like an electrical gadget stops working, leaves of the tree wither, and so on. Well, okay, so apparently he's gone a different way than I thought he was going. Although, everything I said, that stuff still happens. I think we've all had some experience of that person. But this, so you feel bad and something breaks? Okay, first, can we weaponize this? Can we show Karen her tiny income tax rebate and then send her into an enemy stronghold to knock out their defenses as she stumbles around crying about the unfairness of it all? And second, assuming the wild idea that maybe this isn't what's going on, maybe if you feel like crap and something breaks, it just adds to the crappy day you've been having, so you remember it all, because it sucks so much. 
And when something breaks on a day that's going really well, it's much easier to deal with and maybe you just get it fixed and forget about it. Nah, electromagnetic pulse sad face seems much more plausible, right? But when they are in a happy state or a good mood, things move smooth and fine. Maybe there's a connection between people with spiritual gifts and nature that makes nature respond to their mood. I'm sorry, what? Which part of nature do laptops come from exactly? And yes, while technically humans are a part of nature, so everything they produce is technically natural if you want to be that pedantic, but that's never what anybody means, so shut it. Where do the laptop trees grow exactly? And can I have one? Because that sounds awesome. Five. Wait, we're only halfway through? Actually, less than that, technically. Nope, I've run out of booze and I can't do this anymore. Four is enough, right? Last time I let someone trick me into doing something like this. Certainly won't do anything if you say, send me a link with mad videos you found to my email or a direct message on Twitter, saving me from having to search these people out myself. I would just hate that. Please do it, I'm so lazy. Do you want pretty okay clothes at fairly alright prices? Then head on over to Sir Six Merch Store. There you can buy sick brand merch, and not a lot else. Who needs food, water, or accommodation when you can have a hoodie with my face on it? No one, that's who. I can't even afford them because I have a home, like a moron. So get on over today before these printed to order clothes run out somehow. And you're gonna need a lot of them when you're sleeping outside on the ground with your family like that. It's cold out there. I do envy you.